today I'm coming to you with a wonderful new project made with Little Birdie Crafts Shabby Chic Bouquet Collection. And I just love the soft vintage patterns and images. I worked with the 12 by 12, but I'm going to show you the 6 by 6 because I, well, here, I'll just put this aside. I'll show you. So lots of beautiful layered textures in this and this beautiful kind of taupey background with cream accents. There are 10 12 by 12 pages. Um, the 6 by 6 pad which is the same patterns, just reduced for someone who wants smaller images. There are 24 sheets in this. And this is 250 GSM, which is 110 pound paper. So super sturdy. I love working with this paper. So beautiful vintage florals, wood grain backgrounds. This looks like old wallpaper. I just love it. Um, really sweet lacy elements and dots and then here's where I got busy and started cutting it up this wonderful ivory wood grain this beautiful polka dot these are some of the little three by four journal cards here's another piece of that polka dot with the crochet lace on it beautiful lacy elements with florals more of these three by fours, just really beautiful. And I love this wood grain with dots and then these little florals, a gorgeous, elegant damask, and then these fantastic little punch outs. These just pop right out. So they're very easy to use in a project. I also used um, the cut apart page, which as you can see, I cut the whole piece apart. I like to have a big stack of these because I never know what I want to use. And then I used the um, Rosalind uh, Pearl Pink Roses, uh, one of these sweet little uh, Fairy Sparkle Butterflies, and then Fairy Sparkle, these are Elvina. I used the light pink blossoms from this. So what we're going to make today is a wonderful pocket card, only this time the pocket's on the outside just to change things up and keep it fun. These make great gifts. Um, they're unique and you can personalize it to the individual who's receiving it. This measures five by seven and it's a top fold. And then the box pocket, which you'll learn how to make in the tutorial, is half an inch deep. And inside the box pocket, I put a beautiful little vintage spoon. I put, I've decorated a little individually wrapped chocolate with paper and fussy cuts from the collection. Here's a lovely little honey stick. This tag pulls out of the pocket and there's a tea bag here. So that's really fun. And then a cookie. So I call these tea parties in a box. And then once all the goodies are eaten, you've got this beautiful display to look at. I've used um, a chipboard piece that I've treated with gesso and metallic wax. I've layered up these beautiful papers, all these fussy cuts and flowers. So this will stand on its own. It can become home decor, which is really fun, a beautiful gift and a card. More chipboard pieces down in here and you'll, we'll actually build this floral cascade together. And the ribbon for this one is actually on the tag rather than on the card. And there's room on the back of the tag to write your greeting. Then on the inside, we've got more of these beautiful layered papers and fussy cuts and just a very simple little corner pocket created by fussy cutting a floral corner and um, gluing down just the sides and then adding a journal card. So these are really great for any occasion. If you'd like to learn how to make one, stick around because I have a full tutorial that will show you how to build the base, add the box pocket, and then create the floral cascade. So don't go away. The fun is just getting ready to begin. Here comes the tutorial. Let's um, go ahead and get this card base put together and I'll show you what I've done here. This is a five by eight inch panel from the Shabby Chic Boutique of the wood grain and then a five by seven. And what I did was scored that at one inch, then I tucked the five by seven inside using the pattern side. And this creates a five by seven top fold card, just as easy as you please. 
Now for the box pocket. And this time I'm putting it on the outside of the card. This is a seven by four and a half panel of this pretty uh, crocheted lace and netting paper. The formula that I use for a box pocket is the width that you want, and then because this is a half inch deep pocket, two half inch score lines. So you wanna double the depth that you want for your pocket. Um, so that's how we ended up with seven by four and a half. And I'll show you how to put this together. As you can see, well, let me, whoops, premature there. So I score a half inch and a half inch on this side and a half inch and a half inch on this side. And then I turn it this way because I want my lace to be at the top and I go a half inch and a half inch. Fold this along those scored lines and burnish with a bone folder or the side of a ruler. If you don't have a bone folder, I, I really think it's a basic paper crafting tool because it makes such beautiful sharp creases and it really saves a lot of wear and tear on your hands. And they're not expensive, so invest in one. All right, so now we have a one inch square on this side and a one inch square on this side. I'm gonna take my scissor from the bottom and I'm gonna cut up that first score line to the top score line. And I'm gonna cut again and I'm just gonna take this piece out completely. So let me show you again. Just from the bottom to the first score line and then just cut this out completely. So now you have these two little tabs and you can see how this is going to fold in and make a lovely little box. So bring this in. Bring in your adhesive, and you want something that sets up fairly quickly. And I'm putting adhesive on those tabs, and then I'm just kind of rolling my paper in on itself. And I'm adhering this tab down inside the box pocket, and I'm keeping my corners nice and straight. So we'll just repeat that on this side, get that lined up, hold it in place, glue it in down at the bottom. Just hold that for a second. You can use red liner tape or you can use, you know, whatever adhesive you like. I like um, Art Institute Dries Clear Adhesive. Then this little tab tucks inside and the outside edges come in, put a little adhesive here. Oops. Just hold that for a second. And a little adhesive here. And just hold that right there for a second. Okay. See? And now you've got this lovely little box. And you're going to attach it this time on the front of your card. So it'll be like this. And I do come in and I just trim the corners off because that way they're not as visible and it just gives it a more finished look. So when you put your designer paper down, you're just gonna glue this box pocket to the front of your card. And then you can fill it with your tags, your treats, um, you know, a shaker element, whatever you like. But that's the basics on that. But before you put this on, remember, finish the inside of your card first. So I'm going to go work on that, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, that just took a moment. I finished the inside of this card, and I'll just take it apart. First, I put down a four and three quarter by six and three quarter piece of this beautiful polka dot and rose circle pattern over the wood grain. 
Then I cut a four and a half by five and a half of this beautiful damask and put it in the center. Then from the Fussy Cut page, I took this cluster of roses and I think those are lilacs and I glued just the edges to form a corner pocket that I can tuck this little sentiment card in. So that finishes the inside of the card. Now if you wanted to mount a photo up here or you know write a note, you've got plenty of room to do that and this the soft color of this paper allows that. Now we have to go to work on the front cover. So on our cover Remember, we've got this wood grain in the background. Then I just wanted to add a little bit of layering. So I cut a four and a half by six and a half panel of the same damask. And then to bring in that soft pink, I matted it on pink cardstock. And this is gonna just get put down on this front, the front of this card. And really centering the top and the sides is the most important thing because the bottom is going to be covered by our box pocket. Then before we attach that box pocket, this, this is four and a half by three and three quarters. And I'm going to lay it this way instead of this way. Um, but I do, again, I just want to bring in some of those soft, soft pinks in the background to break up all of the white and the cream. I want this to go right about here. And just lay that down. Now here's our box pocket. This goes down next. And we're just gonna place our adhesive on the back. And we're going to line this up along the bottom of our card. and then take a ruler or a bone folder or whatever. Make sure your sides are lined up and just go in and burnish those sides down so that they stick where you want them to stick. Next, I'm gonna bring in this piece of Little Birdie chipboard. And what I've done to prepare this, I wanted it to look like old wrought iron. So. It comes primed out of the package, kind of a, a basic cream, but I painted it with black gesso. And then once the gesso dried, I came in with the metallic waxes. These are a new product. Um, it's beeswax and it's really beautiful stuff. And you just apply this with your finger. The heat of your hand will help melt the wax and it's very pigmented and it covers really well. So instead of brushing it, I just tapped it randomly over the black. And then I came back with the glimmer moss and I painted this. And I did the same thing with these little chipboard leaves that we're going to work into our flower arrangement. So the metallic wax is fun. I hadn't used it before and I really like it. I'm going to place adhesive on the back of this. Just along the edges. And this is going to tuck down into our pocket and we want to center this like that. And see how it looks like the roses are growing behind and around. I wanted this to have kind of a the look of a trellis. So now I've fussy cut all these elements from the paper collection. I just wanted to have a whole bunch because I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. But I'm just going to layer these in and around and maybe some down on the box and just dress this up and get it ready to go to the party, so to speak. So this is the wreath from the Fussy Cut page and I just used a craft knife to cut out the center. I've backed this with foam dimensionals and I just added some little dabs of hot glue to the back as well because I wanna make sure that this really stays stuck. And I'm just laying that down in the center of our beautiful door. And then 
I'm going to start building a floral arrangement with these beautiful leaves. I'm working with Little Birdie, uh, Rosalind, and Pearl Pink. And this is just a gorgeous rose bouquet. But I also pulled out a bunch of other flowers because I find I like to mix and match. I think it makes for a more realistic looking floral arrangement. And since I have the hot glue gun ready, I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on these leaves. And lay them down so that they look like they're growing up. The side of a wall. I'm going to go down in here and I want it to look like it's growing up the side of our wreath. So I'm going to take two of these beautiful rosebuds and a spiral. And I just like to wrap the stems around each other. And I can arrange these the way I want them to be. And then put them in place. Um, change the direction and the angle of your flowers because flowers don't grow in a straight row. You know, like the little pictures we used to draw when we were in first grade where all the flower stems look like popsicle sticks. Um, don't be afraid to add some variation to the direction of your flowers. So I fussy cut this little uh, bracket right about here so that it looks like a plant shelf that's growing on the wall. And then I also did this sweet little cluster of birds and flowers. And I did double dimensionals on the shelf and just a single layer on the birds because this allows me to tuck them down in here and it just creates wonderful depth. And I'm gonna move these a little bit. I want those down below the edge. I should be able to pick this up, move it down just a little bit. I put these on first. There we go. I want those um, sticky dimensionals down um, below. I want this shelf right about here. Just like that. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this hot glue. I want this leaf to look like it's climbing up and that one underneath. And see how the dimension that creates? It's just a really simple thing, but it looks really neat. We need to anchor this at the bottom, so I'm gonna take two more of these beautiful rosebuds and entwine them. And add in a spiral, just kind of mirroring, mirroring what I did on the top. Look how beautiful. So, so pretty. I want these to be touching this, actually, so I'm going to move those up just a little bit. And then to anchor this at the bottom, this beautiful big pink rose. And now I want to bring in these little smaller flowers. These are Natalie. A little more greenery here. Tuck this right in here. And see, by doing that, we're tying all these pieces together. So nothing looks like it's just kind of, it looks organic almost. Um, and then that little piece right in there looks really good. Now, we've got these beautiful tendrils. And I want to add these in.
anything else. Okay, so for this tag, I just took an ivory tag. I covered it with designer paper, and then look how you make your pocket. You take one of the punch out circles, score it toward the bottom, glue it on the back, and then it's gonna make this lovely pocket. And so you can actually fit something in it. I just took a couple of scraps of paper, folded them in half to make these little gussets. And we're just gonna put a little bit of hot glue on these, not a lot because we don't want it to squish out all over everything. We're gonna press that down. And then look, our tea bag will fit right inside there. Nice as you please. And then a little bit of chocolate. Always a treat. Usually I let that glue set up just a little bit more, so I'm not gonna overstuff this at this point, but you get the idea. Then this is gonna go right down into our pocket, just like that. Then a honey stick that I decorated with a little piece of the designer paper to sit back in behind. A beautiful little vintage demi-tasse spoon to tuck in there as well. And then I took a little individually wrapped cookie, dressed it up with the designer paper, and this is gonna fit right behind, I think. Yep. And then our chocolate, maybe I'll just wrap this with designer paper too and tuck that back in the back because I think the pocket might be full. But anyway, you get the idea. This is what I call a tea party in a box. These make the most wonderful birthday gifts, anniversary gifts. You do it in Christmas paper. It's great for Christmas, um, any special occasion. And I'm gonna add another little flower on top of my bow once um, I'm done filming. But you get the idea of how to put these wonderful box cards together. Lots of fun. The inside, you've got plenty of room to write a message, put in a photo. Um, personal, unique, special. You can't go to the store and buy anything as wonderful as this. So, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design for Little Birdie Crafts. Thank you for joining me. If you would like this video, it will help other people, other paper crafters to find it. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would love to have you join me on the journey. You can visit my blog for a linked supply list for everything I used in this project. And now I'm going to go get my craft on. Bye.